I just come from the poet's parts. What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. This is Power Book 2, Episode 2 Recap. Now, this show is way better than I even expected, even without ghosts. <laughs> but you know me, man. First of all, I got to give a shout out to the notification gang. And if you're new to the channel, you want to be a part of the notification gang, hit your subscribe button, turn on your notification, and you get something every time I upload. So even without ghosts, this is a good show. And you know I'm not going to hold you up, so let's jump right into it. This is Episode 2. Power Book 2. Right off the bat, this meeting with Tasha and McQueen is about what went on in court. McQueen brings in a lady. She's an investigator for his case. Her name is Paula. So what she does is she pretty much does the background checks and all kind of legal like stuff in the back. She does the digging. She'll give him the information. But as of right now, Tariq's only came up with $50,000. Tasha didn't even know that Tariq was paying for it. She thought Stern was paying for it. And McQueen is like, nah. I'm going to need this money. So Tasha like, all right, we're going to get this under control. But what was that that happened in court? Why did Sachs do this? And McQueen is like, I need you to tell me the truth because you haven't told me the truth. You just said Tommy helped you kill your husband because you asked him to. Now, they're bringing you in on a kingpin statue. Like, if you're connected with them, let us know. And Paula's like, did you have anything to do with the drug operation? And Tasha's, she's saying no. But then she asked her, why is your name on a lot of these checks and on a lot of paperwork at the club? And Tasha says, well, I may have set up a couple of accounts or whatever. And McQueen is like, hold on, hold on. Don't say nothing like that. Let's pretend you were under oath. Did you have anything to do with this? No, no. So pretty much McQueen is like, man, they got you tied into stuff. So this hey, this is, might be serious. I'm going to try to get it dismissed. But you got to act like you didn't have anything to do with this. Now we get to see a little bit of Tariq's school life. So Tariq shows up to the class. I don't know if it's already been started or he's late, but they all sitting down and there's a girl in front of him. She's reading off the book and we get to see the black guy that isn't really black and his name is Richard, but he sits on the other side. You know, see all the cool kids be on this side. But anyway, Jabari, being the hater that he is, he asks Tariq, okay, Tariq, what did you think about this book? So Tariq gives his explanation about it. And he's like, okay, cool. So within this class, it's pretty much like an open debate. If you say something, anyone can chime in and just ask you a question to go off of whatever you answer. So Lauren's sitting next to Tariq, and Tariq, he really didn't read the whole book, so she asked him, okay, you believe all that, but what about at the end? Why did he make us feel like this? And Tariq didn't have an answer, so like I said, hating Jabari was pretty much, this is the second book you haven't read. You need to take an easier class than this because canonical studies just isn't for you. If you're not reading the books, you're going to be behind. And we know that Lauren's kind of, you know what I'm saying? She kind of feeling Tariq, so she tells Tariq, she like whispers to him like, I didn't mean to throw you up under the bus or anything, but Tariq is pretty much apologize and say, I should be doing better. I should be keeping up. But I think she did throw him up under the bus. She's trying to push him to the next level. It's another eventful day for Mr. Tariq. So, before he went to class, Zeke was asking about his book report, and Tariq's like, man, I got you, bro, you know what I'm saying? Just make sure you read a little bit, because Camille, she's going to ask questions about it. And Zeke's like, all right, bro, I got you. Tariq also mentions, hey, can I can I come by your aunt's house later on and eat? Because I don't want to eat, you know what I'm saying, the cafeteria food. So Zeke is like, all right. And also after class, Tariq runs into his boy, and his boy's pretty much like, hey, man, let's go to a party tonight. And Tariq is like, nah, I'm not really feeling all that. I'm, Plus, I got plans, which takes us to Miss Monet, auntie, you know what I'm saying? We at her house, and she's laid up with a police officer. He's pretty much saying, why are you still with Lorenzo? He's in jail for life. He can't take care of you. He can't give you anything. And she's pretty much like, me using Lorenzo's name in these streets, I get respect. Me dating you, that's not going to give me anything. And plus, you got to get out of here because my kids is on the way. And we already know Kane already killed somebody in the first episode. So she's like, you can't be here when Kane's here because if Kane sees a cop here, he's gonna look at his mom differently and he's definitely gonna try to do something to that cop. So we see that she has a little, you know what I'm saying, a little love fling going on with the cop. So even with all her power, she still has an inside source, which is gonna come and help them out later. I'm pretty much guaranteeing it. For everyone wondering, Ghost is dead. And unfortunately for Tariq, the funeral is tomorrow and people want him to speak at it. So he sat down with McQueen and he sat down with Stern. And both of them had different ways of looking at it. 
McQueen wanted Tariq to speak negative about his dad and just put out there that Ghost is a bad person. The reason for this is it helps Tasha's case of saying, oh, I wasn't a queen pen. You know what I'm saying? Even my son knew that Ghost, James St. Patrick, was doing bad things. He was in charge of it. I was just married, and I'm trying to take care of my kids. Now, Stern, on the other hand, is like, Tariq, me and your business partners now. Me and your dad were in the business, so you need to speak highly of your dad. You know what I'm saying? Because if you start talking negative and people start seeing your dad as a drug dealer, then it's like, okay, let's not do business with them because that's all dirty money. So for for Stern, he's like, hey, me and you business, your estate's going to go down if you talk bad about your father. So this has, that's the big dilemma for Tariq to decide, is he going to talk bad about his dad so his mom look good? Or is he going to talk good about his dad so they can all keep this money? He can graduate school, get the money, and still take care of his family because he's in business with Stern now. So that's Tariq's big dilemma now about what I'm going to say at the funeral. And that, and that confirms that Ghost is dead, people. He's dead. There's no other theories. He's dead. We're going to see the funeral. It's tomorrow. Now we get an interesting back and forth. We get to see McQueen's standpoint on why is Tasha getting charged with his queen pin charge and Saxon knows that Jamie did this. And Sax is like, how am I going to charge Tasha with this when I know she didn't do it? Jamie did this. So for McQueen, it's there has to be something else. There has to be something personal for Sax to go ahead and try to take every charge that they put on Jamie to put on Tasha. So that's what McQueen is. Sax, he's talking to the to John and to the other guy from the Democratic Party. And he's like, how can I prove that? And they're like, what did you prove in court that Jamie did? And Sax is like, nothing. So what he's trying to tell Saks is we can put all that on there because just like you didn't prove Jamie did anything, they can't prove Tasha didn't do anything. So now it's about to be a big back and forth. So I don't know how Saks is going to do it. We all know Saks from previous uh, seasons. He's going to mess it up somehow, some way. This whole time we knew that Carrie and Jabari had a pass. Oh, hating Jabari. But we didn't know that. Jabari actually got the job because of Carrie. So they get into a little argument about Tariq being behind. And she's pretty much saying, well, Tariq has a murder in his family. His dad's funeral is tomorrow. We're going to have a vigil tonight for him. And Jabari's like, no, you're not. This is just another one of your little, you know, saying, little things that you do. We don't need to be doing that on campus. They start arguing and it it goes away from them arguing about Tariq to them arguing about each other. And Carrie's like, let's just keep it business and keep it on Tariq. And he's like, keep it on Tariq. You helped me get this job. You knew that this was going to happen between me and you. So now Tariq's out the window. And these two, oh, uh, yeah, Jabari creeps up on her. You know what I'm saying? When you creep up behind her, and most of the time when she turns around, she's going to give you that kiss. Especially if Carrie, she's been feeling them. <sighs> Unfortunately for Carrie, she lets Jabari smash again. But she has a sponsor, and the sponsor is pretty much helping her get past this relationship she had with Jabari. Like, leave it in the past. And the sponsor even tells her, why would you get him a job when you already know that this is what's going to happen? And she's just like, I, I just don't. <sighs> Ladies, why do y'all do that? You know you ain't supposed to be back with him. Leave him alone. Carrie, come over here. Leave Jabari alone. He's no good for you. Tariq actually ends up going to Monet's house with Zeke, and we all just at the dinner table eating. It's me, Diana. We got Kane at the head of the table, Zeke and Drew on the other side, Monet at the other end, and we all just chilling. And Monet's asking about Zeke and how he feels about school and stuff. He's like, well, I can't play basketball this week, but I'll be off academic probation because Tariq hooked me up. So they asked Tariq, what class are you taking? He was pretty much telling them conical studies, and he takes an art class. Now, we haven't heard the other brother, Drew, talk at all, but he seemed interested in, like, what? What? You take art? And Tariq was like, yeah, it's the last class I could get. But they were interrupted by a knock at the door. They end up opening it up. Who comes in? Another character, Uncle Frank. Uncle Frank is Lorenzo's brother. But he gets out of jail early, and everyone's looking at him, and he comes in. He pretty much looks at Diana like, oh, wow, you grown. But he's sitting there, and then he starts going at Monet. Saying, uh, aren't you the family member that's supposed to take care of people, break people off? And everybody's looking at him like, man, what the? <sighs> but anyway, Monet's like, yeah, we ain't having this. You got to get up out of here, Frank. She tells Drew to take Frank to go get something to drink. Zeke's been drinking, so he stays at the house. And then Kane ends up driving Tariq back to school. 
Now, while they're on the trip back to school, they stop and Kane starts talking to Tariq. He puts his gun in, in the front of his pants and he's asking Tariq pretty much like, you know what I'm saying? We don't know you. We can't trust you. And Tariq's like, man, I'm cool, bro. But what you need to do is worry about your uncle because he's snitching. Ain't nobody getting out that early from jail. You said he had more time on there. Well, if your dad told him to come hit up your mom, he would have told your mom that he was coming. So now, Kane is like, damn, you know what? You right. But he doesn't know anything about Tariq. He doesn't know that Tariq's family is all in this. So when Kane gets back home, they pull up to the house and Diana's talking to Monet. And Monet is already piecing this together. Like, he's got to be a snitch, man. He's out. And Kane comes in and was like, hey, uncle is a snitch. So they all looked at each other. They're like, dang, Tariq is smart. But Monet's like, uh... Zeke, what do you know about Tariq? And he's like, uh, I have no idea. And boy, he doesn't. When Tariq arrived back at the school from getting dropped off, he didn't know that there was a vigil going on for him. But when he pulls up there, everyone's around. He's like, man, what the? So he finds Braden. He's like, man, let's go to that party you want, you were going to go to. They end up going to the party. And it's Braden's older brother's party. They're at the frat house on campus. And they, they pretty much pick on Braden because he's a freshman now. And you know how it is with your little brother. So they picking on him. But it turns out somebody knew who Tariq was, and they say, oh, you're the guy whose dad was a big time, you know, say, club owner, running for lieutenant governor, and he was killed by your mom. You're famous. Y'all can stay. So now it's like they're cool because everybody on campus knows who Tariq is. But while this is going on, there's another knock at the door, and it's the police officers, and they're pretty much like, hey, we're shutting this down. Now, Brady has an older brother named Trace, and them two, the Westons, their parents built where their family gave them the, the swimming pool, the auditorium, all kinds of stuff. So pretty much they're untouchable. The police is like, we're going to break this up. And Trace, the older brother, like, do you know who I am? And the cop was like, I don't care who you are, I'm breaking it up. So he punches the cop. All this commotion is going on. More cops come in. Braden goes and talks to him like, do you know who we are? I apologize for my brother. That's Trace and I'm Braden Weston. Weston. So they all get let go. While all this is happening, Tariq's looking at it like, dang. These dudes got some power. And Braden, when he came up and talked to Tariq earlier, he pitched that, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, I won't back in like we were doing in high school. We was making some money. We can make a lot of money on this campus. And Tariq was like, he's looking at this like, okay, I see what he's saying. If we run it through the frat house, yeah, we can get some money. Plus, I need 450000 for my mom. So I think this might be Tariq's way in through the frat house. McLean and Sachs, they go meet with the judge because right now what they're trying to do is bring in other people. You remember Miss Sullivan, the one that charged Tasha at first and was telling her, we can give you four years probation if you say that someone else killed you. So Method, no, I'm about to say Method, man. McLean is pretty much asking the the, uh, the judge, hey, if we bring her in, can we just question her to see if this would go? So they bring her in and she's pretty much saying, uh, whatever Sachs got going on, with Tasha, I didn't know anything about it because he's the one that told me to give her these charges and do this and this just for us to drop the murder charges at the trial and bring Tasha in <laughs> as a queen pin. So that's what they're trying to use. Like, Sack has an alternative alternative motive where he wants to try to throw somebody on up under there. And the judge is like, okay, I see what you're doing, Sax. And Sack's like, oh man, here we go. But, uh, one question, I have a, I have somebody that I want to bring in. A little bit later, we'll get to who Sachs brings in. We got a star-studded event now. We have the day of the funeral. They bring Tasha up there, all black on the big hat, and then they put her in handcuffs. So, and McLean's like, hey, man, you can't do that because we want her to go up there and speak on her behalf. And if she has a handcuffs on, it's going to make her look guilty like she still killed her husband. And for Sax, that looks good. Like, okay, she got the handcuffs on, and he comes over and gloats about it. Like, you thought she was going to get up there and make her, you know, saying people feel sorry for her. This whole time, Tariq is begging, like, I can I can do it. I'll get up there and talk for her. But we also have Tate. Tate shows up, and he's with Sax and them. He's talking about, I'll get up there and say something about James. And we all know how they ended. Hell, he was going up to the club to kill James that last night, but... So we have everybody here, and Tariq is just begging, can I, can I do it? It goes on a little bit. They end up sitting Tasha down with Grandma, you know what I'm saying, the, the new casted daughter, and but she's sitting separate from him. And Tariq's just sitting there, and everybody's looking like, dang, man, it's really happening. Ghost is being buried. 
now it's Tariq's turn. He actually goes up there and he starts to speak on his dad's funeral. And the first thing he comes out and says is, there were people that wanted me to speak bad on my father. There were people that wanted me to speak good on my father. Now, as I was younger, I didn't really know much about my dad. And I'm realizing that now, I still really didn't know that much about my dad. So all I do know is everything he did was for us, for the best for us. Regardless of what he was doing with Angela or whatever, he didn't say this, but regardless of whatever he had going on, he would always make sure his family was straight. Now, in the end, it was a little shaky, but he was always looking out for Tariq. He didn't want Tariq in this life. And what Tariq also says is, what he learned from his dad is that his dad wanted him to live the life that Jamie never got to live growing up. And for Tariq, that's what he appreciates about his father. And he's going to try his best to, to be what his father wanted him to be. Even though we know he's going to go down the wrong road, that's what he's trying to be. So after this, everybody, they like, dang, Tariq did a good job. Like, <sighs> he did a good job, though, man. I'm, the kid's acting ability is great. But right when he gets ready to hug his mom and get, she has to get back in the bus to go home, she whispers in Tariq's ear, I need a plan B pill. Can you get that in there? And then the guards snatch her up. Now, she's leaving. And even McLean's like, man, it would have been better if Tasha would have been up there saying it. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, this is what we got to deal with. So Tariq didn't make it bad or good for anybody. He was just telling the truth. He didn't really know who Jamie was. He didn't know everything that he was into. Sax ends up bringing in Blanca Rodriguez. She's back. And you already know how these two work together. They work together, but they didn't work together. But anyway, Sax brings her in, and he pretty much starts asking questions. Like, me and you worked on the Jamie's case, correct? And then he tells her, when you answer these, it's just yes or no. She's like, yes. Didn't Tasha lead us to the body of silver? Yes. Isn't it funny that she didn't turn in like the body that that she knew was dead and Rodriguez is like yeah but she didn't commit that crime she couldn't she's too little so I was like hold on hold on so we heard her say that she told Tommy to kill Ghost so why couldn't we hear her say Ghost kills Silver so the judge is like oh you're right about this like this could be used in court but what she also says is Sax all right you got this I'm gonna let this go to court but you better be playing by the rule book. And Sax like, hey, all the way, all the way. I'm playing by the books. So right now, they kind of got Rodriguez. So they're showing that we can tie everything in Natasha. She knew about what the organization was doing. So after Sax leaves, <laughs> Blanca, she's talking to McLean. And she's like, look, Sax is dirty. When you guys go to court, you have to let me testify so we can get him up out of there because he's a dirty cop. Well, he was a dirty cop. Now he's just the U.S. attorney, like, he just, you know saying, almost went to jail, had an arrest warrant out, and now he got a promotion, so, but help me, I'm gonna help you guys, if you help me, let me testify against Sachs, so it turns out, Kane's on the mission again, so this is the second week, the second episode, at the end of the episode, Kane's killing somebody, Kane comes up onto a little bar, a little, little restaurant on the corner, he comes in, and he locks the door, Uncle Frank is in there, now, when he goes in there, he hits him in the back of the head with a pill. So they drag him in the back. There's a tarp laid out. They lay him down. And as you can see here, came with another body. Bang, bang, bang. Head shots. Let's wrap him up. But before we wrap him up, let's cut his legs off. And we're going to put him in beer kegs. So they chopping up his body. Once they put him in the beer kegs, they end up going outside. The brother Drew, he pulls up with a truck. He opens it up on the street. They open up the little basement. They come out with the beer kegs. Put it on there. Uncle Frank, Uncle Frank is eliminated. He's gone. So this family, they ain't playing around. And Kane is a pure killer. He's everywhere and he's killing everybody. So he's the black version of Tommy because he ain't playing with nobody. It ain't no talking. Let's just get this action. So Diana, she pulls up on Tariq at school and she's pretty much asking him, how did you know that my, my uncle was a snitch? And Tariq was like, man, well, you know what you're looking for. You can just read people. So they start, you know, saying hitting it off, but we already know they're attracted to each other. And Tariq, he mentions, hey, my mom's on the inside. I know your dad, Lorenzo's in there. Can he help give me my mom a plan B? By the end of the night, I'm going to need you to hide it in this book for me. So Diana, she's like, all right, cool. She goes home and she asks her mom. And her mom's like, okay, Tasha's on the inside. All right, that's something we can work with. 
So Tasha receives a book that night with a phone inside of it and a plan B. The plan B is for this other inmate that she heard earlier talking to a guard, like I need a plan B. So that Tasha is going to use this plan B to make her way in with whoever that lady was because she's probably in charge of the jail because she said she's going to make it a living hell if she doesn't get this plan B. So Tasha's going to use that as leverage to get in with them for a little bit of protection on the inside. And now we're getting this little connection with Monet. You know what I'm saying? And Tasha, so the, the two wives that are on top of both of the little organizations, we got a little connection going on here. I, I like to see how this is going to turn out. I like to see this. So Monet's boyfriend Ramirez is on the police department, pulls up to the house. At the same time, Kane's pulling up and he sees and he's just looking like, what? So he doesn't even go into the house to tell his mom that the job is done, that they killed Uncle Frank. He sees the police officer. He just drives off. So you can tell he's mad. Turns out Ramirez comes in and he has a bottle of, you know, saying you know, a little drink for Monet. And she's like, "Nah, you can't bring this and then come apologize to me. He brings her also the snitch papers from Uncle Frank. And she's pretty much like, how are you going to protect me when you let a snitch come in my house? You're supposed to let me know this information before it happens. And he's like, man, I'm on a lower level. There's nothing I can do about that. I just found out about it. And he came up missing. So do you know anything about it? Which I think Ramirez does. Like, he probably knows that she's doing all these things. But he doesn't care because he's, you know what I'm saying, hitting that. But she's pretty much like... Don't worry about that. That'll take care of itself. But there's this kid, Tariq St. Patrick. I need all the information you can get to me on him. So it looks like we got another cop that's about to be digging in, looking for information on Tariq. All right, that's episode two. Comment below, what do you think? Do you think that Kane is going to get into a Ramirez or he's going to confront Monet? I think he might, but I don't know if she's going to react to it. Like, boy, I'm grown. I do what I want to do. But comment below, let me know what y'all think, man. That's episode two of Power Book 2. The show is actually way better than I thought, man. But tune in next week for episode three. I'm Moda J. Thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel and you like my content, you want to keep getting new shows from me, let me know. DM me. Let me know any show to react to. But like, comment, share, subscribe. Hey, we on the grind of 5,000 subscribers. Thank you for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on the beat, boy.